Hello, welcome. Um, yeah, thanks for joining. The topic uh, is there are no, no bad clients, not at all. They are just bad project managers. My name is Dagmar on Twitter and on uh, Drupal. I'm Dag Mita, and I'm working uh, for a really nice company, for a really nice Drupal agency. It's a Maisy Labs uh, that is based in Zurich, and I'm working as a project manager. So first of all, to warm up after lunch, I would like to ask you some questions. So uh, hands up, who is usually a client? Oh, no clients in the room. <laughs> Great. <laughs> OK, and who is a project manager? Yay, lots of project managers. Developers? Cool. OK, I see some hands twice, so that's good. That's really <laughs> cool. Um, so and then I would like to ask you a question, maybe that you share a bit of your experiences. Why, why do projects fail? Do you have a good example? Maybe just shout out some clients. of your <laughs> clients. <laughs> yeah, we got a rant about bad clients. Communication. Bad communication. Mm -hmm. Why? In which in which way? Bad communication. <laughs> Expectations high. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, high expectations, not, not. Okay, yeah, okay. On the flip side to that though, um, it, it bogs in too much as well. Mm -hmm. from, a, from a sum total perspective. Yeah, yeah, the two ends don't uh, work together, like yeah. expectations and, and deliveries, okay. Well, and no, promises. There's no technology. Mm -hmm. No technology knowledge, yeah. Okay, anyone else? Yeah? No test, no proper testing and big surprises on go live date? Yeah, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Know that? Uh huh. <laughs> okay, that there's people don't really talk to each other, right? And we, project managers, we should be bridging this. So, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, yeah. What do they actually want? Yeah, how can we give them a good solution? Yeah, okay. So, yeah, um, this is all I, we also, I in this company have also lived through. And um, we have also fa uh, failed a lot of times with projects. So, and I summarize them in three big areas where we think we have failed a lot. So one is the initial scope and, and the time, uh, the initial scope was too big and the time too short. And this is also kind of psychological thing. I, I guess a client comes to you and said, look, I, I have this super cool project and I would like to do it with you and it's going to be that scope and I want it by May. Could you help me? Come on, do it. And then you feel like kind of, oh yeah, I would love to help this client. But yeah, at the end, uh, it's a really high complexity. You underestimate stuff and uh, something goes live, as you said, not tested. And after, after go live, you have to fix and fix and fix and fix more and over budget. Um, also, what we have uh, lived is uh, instabilities in the project. Like contact persons change and suddenly the scope changes and the project changed. And, so, and, and we sometimes didn't, couldn't cope really with all this changing, changing people and so. And uh, we couldn't really prove that we have already taken this decision before. So we had to do, redo a lot of work and put in more efforts and more efforts. And finally, we got to something. But again, we, we paid much more, uh, or we worked much more than we were paid for. And then another big reason where we have failed is um, that what you all said as well, the topic about expectations. And it looks a lot like this, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Really high expectations. Maybe you're even promising this, this line because you think, yeah, it's going to be really so cool. But at the end, with Drupal and with everything else around it, you're delivering a shabby cat. So, yeah, so we have failed a lot of times. And uh, we worked on these failures and, and we tried to avoid them. And this is this experience I would like to, to share with you today. And what is, where the a uh, really important point in a project is for us the very start. So from the very start, you, you, you set expectations, you talk about work modes, 
you, 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 you kind of create a relationship with your client. And this is why I would like to start at the very, at the very beginning of a project. So usually it's someone who comes to you and uh, says, hey, uh, pitch your agency to us and show what you can do. And, and you get challenged about uh, all, your kind, all your skills you have. But you also, as an agency, should pitch the client. You should, you should see if you can work together with this person or if, if with this company. Is, if everything is set up really properly so that the project is, is, has a chance to have a success. So we have, we do, and that's why we do a little assessment before we start a project. And for us, three big areas are important. For, uh, it's really, it's clear project volume is always something um, really uh, easy you have to, um, you have to see. If it's, uh, you don't want to go over, you don't want to go high, high, high in budget and you don't know if you can deliver this, like if, if the scope is really, really big, you don't know if you can deliver it. So if it's too high, you have to also see that the risk is really high for you. You have to stick with this client for a very long time. So you have to, to consider the other two points closer if the budget is really, really high. Uh, but still, you would like to have big clients. So if the number is big, if the surface you get at the end is big, it's a really big, it's a really good project for yourself. I would like to talk more about the other two, the client side product owner, and also the stability of the project. So how do you assess the stability and how, how is it important? As I said, stability has caused a lot of problems for us in the past. And uh, it's also um, defining how much work you as a product owner have to put in at some time. So that's why we ask at the beginning what the organizational structure is of, of the company itself, of the project, how is it set up, who is taking decisions, who is, who is being the contact, uh, how do they decide, like what are the processes, do they really take very, very long, so you have to stretch out the project over a really long period. I have been talking with people that have projects with, with governments you talk about years and not about months, so this might be influence how you, how you interact with the client and how you organize yourself. And also how stable is, is the organization? How high is really the commitment to the project? Um, is, is, it, is there an organization behind this project that are, that are, fueling, uh, that are helping this project to, to succeed? We have, for example, a lot of B2B clients or a lot of clients that are maybe not yet so into, into this uh, online area. And sometimes a project, uh, an online project brings a lot of other changes with them. Suddenly they realize, oh, we have to change our CRM system because this new product structure we have on the website is not in the CRM system or not even lived in the organization. And this can also be a danger for your project if the organization is not ready to handle this. So this is something we, we, we ask for. And then we also ask for the business model. Where does the money come from? Is it sure? If you work with startups, this might be a valid question to, to ask. If you start with bigger companies, maybe rather not. <clears throat> and understanding also the business model is, is important for later on, understand well uh, the requirements the clients will have. And that's why I would like to go, go on and talk about the goals. Like there's a business model overall on the company level. And then as, as the next thing is, yeah, but what would, would you like to achieve with, the, with your website? And uh, I guess a lot of people ask these questions frequent, frequently. I'm sure you have a lot of you. And a lot of times we get the answer, yeah, we want to have more users. And we want to have a better usability. Okay. Great. <laughs> this is, these are not the goals you want to know because uh, a lot of users you gain with really good content and with SEO and with the overall interesting topic. And uh, user experience is something you cannot really measure. You can't really design for good usability. It's a prerequisite for a website to, to have a good usability. So what we want to know is the conversion goals. What do people should do on your website? So. Uh, should they uh, buy something that's really easy, e-commerce platforms? But if it's not an e-commerce platform, what else are conversion goals? 
Is it uh, more social sharing? Is it generating leads, if you're talking again, again about um, B2B, or um, any other goals? But we asked for these goals very, very early in the process because uh, if there are no really goals, there might not be really a commitment to it, and there might be also kind of changing along the ways. Oh, yeah, we want to have this, but yeah, we have changed our minds and we want to maybe something else. So, no, this is something that has to be clear from the beginning on. Then let's talk about the, the client-side product owner. It is, if you're a project manager, it's your counterpart. So it's a, a, an important person for you. And we had projects where we kind of fail or that were very difficult to handle if there is no single point of contact, but different persons. So we had five persons contacting us regularly about things that should be a requirement and things that should be changed. And no one is really under control at this point. And at it can, it can end in different um, negative discussions like, oh, why is the budget? Uh, why don't we have any budget anymore? Yeah, because five people were giving us work and now it's over. Okay, big surprises. Or when things are not matching together, if someone wants uh, feature A and someone uh, would like to have feature B and then you, they are kind of conflicting with, that, with each other. So, uh, to avoid this, this situation, we, we tell our clients that we need one single point of contact for our project, for the whole duration. And depending on the side, of the, of the, on the, side, uh, the size of the project, it, it should be like kind of 70% of the, the per person's uh, work. So some people or some product owners that haven't had a lot of experiences with web projects, they sometimes think that it's really easy to, to, to hire an agency and they do everything for you. But we would like to have clients that are really engaged in the project, in the project because they have to deal with their site afterwards, they have, to, they have to edit the content or have someone else editing the content and they really have to know their site really well. So uh, this person should be really dedicated to the project and should be your single point of contact. Also, it, this person should have decision-making powers. Also, something we have, um, we have had bad experiences with. Uh, we have had a really great uh, collaboration with the project manager, and we were, we were already, like, and we were almost launching the project, and then there comes this big meeting with the CEO. And suddenly, oh, I want something else. Oh, every, a lot of things we were, d we were doing were then not good enough anymore. So, there were a lot of discussions about is it a change request or not and how should we handle this and yeah, if you haven't really had a good process in place, it can be um, a danger for the project. And also, um, your, your single point of contact needs to have a good experience and it can be either or the, per the most important experience the person has or the most important knowledge is in the business so they should really be an expert of their business and of the requirements they have. And the second big advantage is if they know online really well. You cannot really, you don't always have those clients, but um, I think the, the industry knowledge is a, is a big requirement and the web uh, knowledge is a, it's, it's a secondary requirement. As soon as a person is also learning and uh, like kind of that you have a good way to discuss with this person. It's also, I think, especially important with Drupal. Mm -hmm. If someone places the requirement and says, this is exactly what I want to do, it can be sometimes tricky with Drupal because not everything is possible and not everything makes sense to do. So this is also something we check if they, are really if, if they have a certain flexibility to change their, their requirements on the way. So, yeah, let's assume you have a really great product owner on, on the client side and all the other uh, assessment has also been possible, uh, have been positive. Then you can, um, 
then you go on and maybe negotiate the contract and go into more details and discuss about the a really good uh, partnership. And before starting of a project, there are some more things we, we usually discuss with the client and that helps in the future. We make very clear what the client's deliverables are. Um, yeah, deliverables are creating translations, uh, creating the content and editing, edit, add it to Drupal. Is this something you would do as an agency? Or is this something you expect from the client? Also like providing pictures, providing uh, video material, everything. So this needs to be written down somewhere. So that, yeah, and then you establish a timeline with all those tasks. It is a task of, of yourself, what you have to do with special milestones, and you add also the, the tasks of the clients. And this helps then to, to manage the timeline. If, if the client is too late with his tasks, it, it is also going to delay the project. So it's not only you as an agency that uh, can, that, um, that can, or, let's say it differently, like the, the client needs to also have, uh, meet the deadlines, otherwise it's not, not happening. And we have kind of, I mean, we always, or I think a lot of agencies get a lot of urgent projects all the time, and if the client is then delaying even more, you're gonna be working in the nights and on the weekends, and, and this is something we want, to, we want to avoid, and that's why we have uh, rather detailed timelines of what we expect from whom, and we refine them always on, along the project. Then also, before we, we really start implementation, we explain or we talk about how we handle change requests. Um, so I think this is not something really sophisticated, but I think it, it helps to clarify, to have clarified it once. So if, a, if like it's a reality that requirements change over the project all the time. Uh, that's fine. We don't want to implement or work in an agile way. We don't want to uh, create a really big requirements document in before we start implementing. No way. But still, at some point, uh, things are change requests. That's when you have when you have planned the work, when you think something is uh, a new request is taking longer than you requ than the request you have already planned in. And um, if it's taking longer, you have to see how you do deal it with it. Uh, you can either eliminate some functionality at another part you haven't implemented yet, and then the project is going fine. Uh, or you can add it on top of it. But then it can happen that uh, you don't have any, you, you have planned your resources for the next project, to start the next project as well. So then you have to evaluate and explain to the client that this could cause even longer uh, delays of the project. And we had, for example, the case with IEA. The client came to us two weeks before the launch. So, oh, my CEO is using IEA. Oh, I think we have to optimize the site for IEA. But we have planned our, uh, our uh, front end resources already on another project. So we had, had to ask the client, or we had to inform the client that it, it actually, actually takes three more weeks to, to be able to do, to do that. And if you have a proper timing and a proper timeline and have talked about it already, yeah, they will understand. Yeah, something we have already talked about and um, I, I think this is a, a big point that is important throughout the whole project. How you manage expectations, I think you all know it. So some like a developer, uh, yeah, how, how the customer explained it, so you have very different players within a project. And um, uh, everyone maybe understands something differently. And you, as a project manager, you, your responsibility is to align everything, that this doesn't happen. And uh, talking about uh, managing the expectations towards the client, um, how do we do that? We try to educate the client about Drupal because it's in comparison to very flexible frameworks like uh, Ruby on Rails, it's something special because you have, um, you have Drupal core, you have modules and you can do maybe 
depending on the project, but maybe 80% of your project is, is Drupal standards. And then 20% is maybe not. And these 20% costs a lot more to the client than the other 80% of functionalities. And sometimes this is really hard to understand for the client. He's like, what? Like, you built this whole site in three days, and now you're going to say me that this functionality costs five days? This is really weird. <laughs> so uh, telling your client really early what Drupal is and um, how it works helps you to build up trust and to, to, to set the right expectations. On the course of a project, we always take meeting minutes and we take, uh, and we write down uh, decisions. And um, yeah, because if you, if you talked about something three weeks ago and now it's time maybe to, do, to implement it, you're like, wait, how, what did we decide again? So you, you want to go back to your, you want to go back to what you discussed and you want to also be able to point the client to what you discussed. So that's why it's, it's a good place and it's a good, good habit to, to write everything down and then you have a common base and everyone knows where we are standing. Everyone can inform him or so, herself all the time about uh, what is going to come. So I think it gives everyone a really good uh, feeling about the project. <coughs> also, yeah, Ta talking about designs, for example. I uh, don't know if you have like separated design and development phases. This can be difficult. Uh, someone is creating a really beautiful design and you're like, wow, this looks really cool and you show it to the client and the client is, yeah, yeah, that's what I want. If you haven't showed it to your developer, uh, it might be a bit uh, risky because it might not come out exactly as it is on the designs and sure, it's exactly that what you can do, what the client liked most about the design. So try to never, or what we try is never to send out major design iterations to the client before they haven't been discussed with, with the developer or with your CTO. <coughs> yeah, then I want to talk about, us about some principles we follow during the implementation phase of a project. So we, we like to be very transparent in our work, in, in our whole process. We give our client access to almost all project artifacts. For example, designs. We put them either on a server, on a website, or we, we put them on Dropbox, and the client sees all the iterations. And we like to share work in progress because we want to get his feedback uh, permanently and very early. So share your designs. <laughs> the same thing is with the development environment. From day one, we give the client access to the development environment and we invite him to check. And depending on the client, you get really valuable feedback at the beginning. So uh, it, uh, if you send your, your client on a, on a website that is only site builder and that doesn't have any theming on it, some clients still check if the content types are, are good, well implemented, if all the fields are there. I mean, you can, you can benefit from the help of your client as well in this, in this area. So we give this uh, access really early and we in encourage them to have a look. And they find it also funny to see how, how this evolves. Like th there are some, maybe there are sometimes also some phases of panic where they're like, <gasps> two weeks before the launch and it doesn't look like my website I wanted. And you're like, yeah, yeah, just, it's coming, it's coming. And then they, they see how it's built up and, and they, they, they're really emotional. And I think it's, it's not to, under, to underestimate the, the emotions in a project. It's, it's usually something really emotional for a project manager to, to create a new website. So just invite him or her to, to, to live that emotions also. Um, also, um, yeah, not only uh, we give full access to the development area, but also to the issue tracking tool, to our, how we organize our development work. So um, they see all the sprints and all the tickets uh, that the, develop the developers are working on right now. And um, 
Uh, also time tracking. They see the times we're working on something. We don't hide it. We don't really tell them, look up what we have, how much we have worked until now, but uh, if they want to, they can see it. <coughs> so next principle is, is we want to work lean. How can we save time? We usually have a rule, not more than two people in a meeting. Also, when we go to pitches, we try to only send two people there. We don't mind if five people at the clients are in front of us. We don't think we don't think we can we can be better by showing more number of per, a higher number of persons from our agency. And usually, we tell this very openly, and it gives a really good impression. Say, oh yeah, they 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 seem to be efficient. And another point, yeah, we try to eliminate the middleman as, as much as possible. So the mid middleman is something like someone like me, project manager. I don't have to be involved every in everything. I can't. We are 18 people, and we are two and a half project managers. And we are uh, eight or nine developers. So um, project managers cannot really be everywhere. and. If uh, there is a possibility to cut myself out or to cut project managers out, we do it. If there's a technical decision to take, uh, we invite technical people from the client talking to, a, uh, to our CTO, to our developer. Or we have some really, really, um, we have some really good developers that also like to have some contact with clients. So after the project is finished, sometimes they take over the whole mandate. And, and they continue the, the client relationship. And it works, depends on the client. You, cannot, you don't want to do it with everyone. If you have a really web savvy product owner on the side, that, that's a good way to connect developers and, uh, um, and the client directly. If you have someone that needs a lot of consulting and lead, needs ideas and of how to solve their problems, it's not a good way. Yeah. and. Um, I've already talked about before about that we invite the client to use a uh, ticket tracking tool. We use Jira from Atlassian. So this also follows our, our principle to, to use only universal tools, like not having a tool for the client or a communication way with the client and another one with developers. But we try to, to duplicate as little information as possible. So. For example, specifications is, are validated by the client and they served for developers. And uh, we don't accept uh, bugs via email or PowerPoint. We really encourage and sometimes we force our clients <laughs> to use our, our tracking tool. And it works fine. We don't have any client that doesn't do that. Yeah, so how and where do we demonstrate expertise? And I don't talk about technical solutions. Now it's more the expertise of project manager, of the, of the area of project management. So you as a, as a project manager, you can help to deliver quality within the project. So one part is you can help the client to, to to set the scope of the project. And we encourage ourselves all the time and everyone else as well, go for the minimal viable product. This is the smallest uh, iteration that is providing user value and that is enough to go live with. This is actually a really major point. As before, one of, of, one of the failures I mentioned is too high complexity in too little time. And we can't manage too high uh, uh, complexities, neither can the client actually uh, manage this. So we really ask our, our clients, or I ask our clients a thousand times, is it really important for the launch? Shouldn't we do it later? Should we, shouldn't we go live with what we have and then build up the next thing? Uh, and, and that's why I also sometimes like really tight deadlines, because then you don't have any other choice. You're like, 
right, we can just do the most and the minimum. And then you build on the space, you build up the space. So go for minimal viable product. <coughs> also be a consultant for your client. Um, yeah, your client, a lot of our clients, they want to, they want to not only know our technical expertise, but they also want to know what we as web expert thinks of it. It goes into the direction of um, information architecture, solution architecture, even marketing. Um, you also, a strength of you as a project manager is that you stand outside of the company. A lot of, a lot of times it, it happens that, that clients and also myself, if you're into something, you just see your reality. And you have, they, uh, some of our clients have, have really special internal processes they, they don't think about and they want to expose them to their users. For example, how should users contact them? Yeah, first you have to select the, the department and then the location you are in and so on. No, maybe the client just wants to hit one button and, and, and get somewhere. So help the client to, to find the best requirements and also they to say no, like get into discussion, say no, I think this is not how you should do it. We have experiences from this and this other project, from this and this other area where it didn't work and, and show these examples. And yeah, it's also, and on the other hand, also argument very, really well what you want the client to do or what you think is the best for the client. It is something to do also, it ha happens also a lot about design. Everyone has a particular opinion about design and and the CEO wants to decide about the design and the marketing manager, everyone wants to have a little bit of his design input. But here we never send out uh, designs just like that and say, look, this is how nice your site could look like. It, we always explain the client why we have chosen a certain setup of the site and, and, and a certain structure. Because often it's not about it's not only about aesthetics, it's not only about colors or, or something, it's about usability. You sh and, and it's also about consistency. I mean, you should not once have a purple button and another time have a red button if it's a primary, if it's a primary call to action. It should be, it should be consistent. <coughs> yeah, the last point of delivering quality, how you as a project manager can deliver quality is quality in the process. And I think it's not to be underestimated because the, the product at the end you can be, is not only dependent of you as an agency. The, uh, it depends on well, a lot of factors. It depends on the content that is on the site finally, it is how it's marketed. The business idea in general is uh, if the business idea in general is good. So you will not always work on the, on the uh, most successful um, products. But uh, you can make a different al difference also in, in, in the quality of the process you deliver. So you, ha you, should be, you should be really well organized, you should be a pleasant person to work with, you should be a critical person to work with. A and this is what you as a, that we as project managers have to deliver to the client as well. Then let's talk a bit about conflicts. I think conflicts happen all the time. And conflicts can be good. It can help in a project. As I said, it's kind of an emotional, it's also an emotional thing. And it's also, if something comes to the surface, it helps you to, to tackle the problems that are there maybe for some more time and that haven't been spoken out. So we have made a really good experiences with having a med moder moderator role, uh, no, a mediator role in, the, in a project. So there's someone the client can speak to that is not involved in the daily, uh, in, in the daily work of the project. Uh, sometimes it's the CEO of our company, but if he's a project manager himself, it might be me as a project manager for, not for this project, uh, be, being the mediator. And um, the client can always, for the client it's, it's clear that he can always go to this person 
and can talk, can talk to this person, can have a coffee and so on. Because maybe you don't, yeah, you might not want to log in your, your client in, in a relationship with, with only you. And sometimes it's maybe a little, sometimes some clarification is needed. Also, pick up your phone. If there's something, don't do mail ping pong or so. Uh, be brave and, and always call. We had a, we had a nice um, an, uh, something funny happening lately. Um, we have a client that likes to really always get more out of out of the work that he actually pays for it. He feels this is kind of a sport for him. <laughs> so <laughs> all the time he's, yeah, trying. And then this time as well, we said, yeah, look, we had some extra work for this, uh, for this phase, so here is what I think you should pay us. And then he's writing us back, no, I think this, is, this ticket is, is, it was really small, it was 15 minutes or so. But he said, no, I don't wanna pay this because it's a principle for me. And then we internally, we discussed about it as well, and we said, yeah, but we, it's also a principle of ourselves that we don't pay this bill. You know, it's a really tiny thing, but it was in this phase of, the, of this client uh, interaction, it was, uh, it was suddenly a really big thing standing bet between us. And um, yeah, and, and we also felt that we have done a lot, a lot for this project because it's a really nice project and we were happy to work longer. So some days before we were doing a deployment until midnight and we didn't charge any, uh, we have two rates, we have a rate for normal business hours and we have a rate for outside, for, for the outside business hours, but we charged only the normal hours because we thought it's, it was just okay. So, and then I called the client and, um, uh, and said, look, it's also a principle for myself. And then we both got really emotional and saying, yeah, but you know, and I said, I said, you know, we worked so hard for you, and you you don't really accept that, and 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 uh, then he also felt w that is, you know, that he also that that there are limits, that it's a it's a both way relationship, and it was really important to clarify that, and don't be like emotions in a project can also be something you can use and something, there are emotions everywhere, so don't always hide them. Maybe sometimes you have to let them out. Yeah, last point, um, maintaining client relationships. <coughs> it can be actually really fun. A lot of people think of support, bugs, little changes, are oh, so boring. But if you do minimal viable products, and if you go live with the minimal you can, then you have a lot of exciting things coming after. And so that is the case for us. In 2013, we had more revenue with existing clients than with new clients. And I don't, I wouldn't say our work is really boring. We can even become, work can become even more fun and more uh, direct. For example, we, we don't write down uh, specifications and and discuss long, a, a very long time about what we should do. Sometimes we just say, okay, we, we, we have an idea. Uh, we think we understood what you want. We just, there are some modules or there are some, some Drupal standard things that, can, that, can, that could answer your requirements. We just put them on the dev side, play around with them, and then we can iteratively s work further on them. And this is really fun, right? You don't, no one wants to write specifications or so everyone wants to get stuff done. And, and this is what we, what we especially enjoy with, with maintenance clients. That is all of my talk. <laughs> Thank you. And um, I'm happy to answer questions. <laughs>